My name is Adric Ogon. I have been assigned to a mission to explore a planet on the verge of the known galaxy. The planet's nickname is Frozen Heart, as the whole planet is apparently a frozen waste so ungodly cold that no intelligent life could ever have a chance to survive. Yet for some reason, the higher up seem to think it is worth analysing. My partner on this mission is a reptilian alien named Galanta. He reminds me of a large, frilled-necked lizard from back on Earth, though he is still only half my size. We only met when we were being put onto the shuttle that would take us to the planet and return us to the main ship. Right now we sit in silence. Galanta double and triple checking he has everything he needs, even though several others already did that just before we left. We both have a lot of equipment. I'm carrying basically everything that will allow us to do research, while he seems to be carrying a lot of things required for survival. Or rather, his survival. I barely recognise any of the devices or gadgets that he's fretting over, so I just assume his species is more fragile than humanity. We are still relatively new to the galactic stage. I wouldn't be surprised if there were many things our species still didn't know about each other. When the shuttle finally reaches the planet's surface, we put on the suits that will help us persevere against the harsh climate, until we are able to set up base with what is in the shuttle storage. As I finally step foot onto the frigid plains, I look upwards to see thick clouds obscuring the entire sky. So this is it, Frozen Heart. He walks onto the snow with his snugly covered tail, leaving a long streak behind him. Yeah, we should try and set up base as soon as we can. I look back for a response, only to see him gawking at the ground. Um, hello? Are you okay? What? Oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Sorry, it's just... I never thought I'd get to all of this. Sure, it's beautiful, but it just looks like winter back home. Honestly, for something called Frozen Heart, I expected something harsher than this. While we got everything set up, Galanta seemed to get more and more nervous with time. Just like in the shuttle, he triple-checked everything that we did. Every once in a while, he excused himself and went to use one of the gadgets he brought here. It was some sort of machine that connected to his suit, apparently charging it up. Though, for what, I wasn't sure. It made me notice how complex his suit was compared to mine. His looked close to an old spacesuit, while mine was basically a glorified winter jacket. What's your species called again? Fuwa, why'd you ask? I was just wondering why your suit and stuff is so much more complicated than mine. What? He seemed confused, then seemed to focus on what I was wearing. Wait, holy shit, is your face exposed? He freaked out, running up to me and grabbing my arm before dragging me onto the shuttle and closing the airlock. What the hell was that for? I ripped my arm away from his to him looking mortified. Are you okay? Your face was exposed to the air. No shit, genius. It's been like that the whole time we've been outside. It has? Then how the hell are you not dead? I'm not dead because it's just a bit of cold air. Can't be much lower than minus five degrees or something. I expected the planet to be colder, but here we are. He sits down and puts his snout in his hands. How the hell is that possible? How can you say that like it's nothing? That's when it dawns on me. I almost laugh at the situation. He's a reptile after all. Thanks for being concerned, but you don't need to worry about me. Now, let's get back to setting stuff up before nightfall. With that, I walk out into the cold. Right. Okay. We managed to get everything up and running just before the temperature started to drop rapidly and head inside our little base. We start organising everything. What we'll do tomorrow, what we'll collect and inspect, where we'll go, things like that. After a long day of work, I decide to go to bed early. We start at first light, after all. Before long, I'm jostled away by Galanta. He's freaking out again. What is? Something's wrong. Very wrong. The temperature in the base is plummeting, and I don't think the heating system in the sleeping quarters is going to last much longer. Have you figured out what's wrong yet? Can we fix it? I have no idea. I was so thorough with the inspections. Calm down. We'll figure this out. Says you, mister, I can survive negative temperatures. Fair. But there's no reason to lose your head. If we can't figure out what's wrong, then it's probably safer to stay the night in the shuttle. But as soon as those doors open, the heat will escape. It's our only option. We'll have to be quick. So with that, we exit the sleeping quarters, and I'm immediately hit in the face with a blast of cold air. I get used to it, though. We need to get to the shuttle. When we're there, we open the door and close it behind us as soon as we can. What's the temperature inside here? It's... God damn it, it's only 7 degrees Celsius. Is that bad for you? Of course it's bad. If I can't charge up my suit and refill my oxygen, I'll be done for. It falls to the ground, defeated. I look around the small shuttle, trying to find anything that could help. Jackpot. A thick blanket. It was probably bad for me, but I never needed it. 
Before I can say anything, his suit begins to beat furiously. He starts to really freak out now. No, 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 please don't. He begs his suit, but to no avail. Calm down and take it off before it runs out of oxygen. Were you not listening to me? It's seven degrees. I take off my jacket and approach him with a blanket. I am warm-blooded. My body gives off heat. You'll be okay. Just take off the suit and trust me. He hesitates, but the furious beeping only becomes worse. Okay. I trust you, Adric. He breathes once, in and out, before taking off the helmet. The reaction is immediate, and he tenses up before he's able to do anything else. I have to help him out of the suit, or is tearing it while I wrap him and myself in the blanket. As soon as his scales make contact with my skin, his instincts take hold, as he tries to get as close to the warmth as he can. The small amount of time it takes for the blanket to trap enough heat is tense, as the warrior was too late, but eventually he begins to warm up. He looks up at me with glittering eyes. Thank you. It's okay. You're going to be just fine. You're like a living furnace. Humans are nice. He looks so helpless like this. The only thing standing between him and a frozen death is a piece of fabric and myself. We stay awake all night. I need to make sure he stays warm enough so I don't dare separate from him for even a moment. I finally manage to hold on to him in a way where I can walk around while keeping him fully covered in the blanket and call for help. When we are taken back onto the ship, Galanta is immediately rushed to medbay to make sure the cold didn't damage anything. I, on the other hand, let the higher-ups know how ridiculously idiotic it is to send someone who is cold-blooded to an ice planet. Their reasoning? I was the only human available, and it was a two-person job. Let's just say the crew immediately requested more humans be hired.